Good afternoon, uh, participants. Uh, greetings and a special welcome to all of you in this uh, platform. In the fondest memory of uh, the gentle giant, Bishop John Osmos. Of course, many of us know him simply as Father Osmos, and others also know him as uh, Comrade Modise. A special welcome to our international participants, uh, if they are here from as far as uh, New Zealand, especially his sister. I don't think they've connected at this hour, but if they are here, a special welcome to them and also to our international guests, other international guests from Zambia, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, et cetera. My name is Tenju M. Tinsu, and I'll be your program director for this memorial on behalf of the African National Congress. I think to all those who knew him, the name Father Osmos vividly brings to our mind that towering image with that warm, endearing smile, those penetrating eyes, that strong, guttural, and yet very gentle voice, and that infectious, hearty laughter, all of which combined immediately to assure you that everything was just going to be all right. Father Osmos was such a kind, fine, wonderful, humane, humble, warm, loving, lovely, compassionate, generous, courageous, selfless, caring, dedicated human being with such high integrity and such humility. And of course, a very naughty sense of humor. This may sound like words, but I think that the speakers today will actually ex expand to give meaning to these words. And I think we shall learn about internationalism, about the revolution, about faith and being a Christian servant. I am not sure if uh, advocate Matole has been able to connect the advocate is the head of the ANC Commission on Religious Affairs, and he's got to open for us in prayer, with a prayer. I don't know if uh, Comrade Matole is there. Uh, on. If you are in, Comrade Matole, can you please unmute and let's receive your prayers. Unfortunately, he has not been able to join, so we suggest that he does the closing prayer, Madam Program Director. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade uh, Phoebe. And uh, it's, it's unfortunate that Comrade Vosi has been proved correct. It's not very good 
to prove uh, Comrade Vusi correct about Comrade Matolin. But it could only be Father Osmos, I think, who chooses to pass on on June 16. Just to remind of all of us who are still living of the tragedy of June 16 and the sacrifices and the need for continued struggles. And uh, Father Osmos, I can imagine him on the June 16 arriving at the world beyond, finding ancestors such as uh, Father Trevor Huddleston, Comrade O.R., Comrade Chris Honey, Andy Phyllis, Mayor Ruth Mompati, Non Cosimini, and many others to wake them up from their slumber with his booming question, admonishing them on how, how they could be sleeping on the job as ancestors instead of protecting us and uh, uh, letting our ANC and our country slide into such a messy state. I think I do not need to go through his, uh, his biography, many of us know him, but I think that um, Comrade Nwako will uh, expatiate on Father Osmos as uh, he knew him in, in the many lives of Father Osmos. Comrade Nwako, can you please unmute? And uh, I know that Comrade Phoebe has uh, been declaring all of us a little bit elderly and therefore tending to go on and on. And I know that uh, she's going to cut me and all of yourselves if we go beyond the minutes she is allocated. Over to you, Comrade Nwako. Um, good afternoon, comrades. Comrade GM, it seems we have lost Comrade Marco. Let me try and get hold of him. Um, Chairperson, may we start with the messages while we wait for Comrade Nwako to join? Uh, Programme Director, Comrade Matoli is here now. Um, Comrade GM, our program director has just joined us again.
Program director, it seems like we have um, lost you for a bit. Comrade uh, Matoli is here. Okay, thank you very much. I've had to change gadgets. Uh, that first one, I don't know what happened. Uh, comrade, um, comrade Matole, you are most welcome to give us the opening prayer. Please unmute Comrade Matole. Uh, <clears throat> comrades, uh, there is a song which says, uh, Mugimu refile sebaka nyana fela, ar sebe di se sebaka se mugimu refile nso. That uh, song confirms that uh, we are temporary sojourners in this world. We are here to serve others and serve our countries. Uh, the passing on of our beloved bishop reminds us that. Uh, from God we come and to God we return. God sacrificed her, her son for our salvation or redemption to teach us the value of sacrifice. South Africa and Africa would still be in bondage if there were no comrades who embraced the principle of sacrifice and service to others and to their country. There are Africans throughout the continent who paid for our freedom with their life like Jesus did. We are today to lay to rest our the beloved uh, Bishop and uh, we have been doing so laying to rest the sons and daughters of our beloved continent who sacrifice themselves for the freedom of all of us. The veterans of our glorious movement not only sacrificed their life and limb for our freedom, but also led us by example. Our veterans are the custodians of our revolutionary values and principles. The pandemics of COVID-19 and gender-based violence have taught us that the country requires behavioral change to address these pandemics. The founders of our democracy were humanists. Their humanist values are rooted in the African humanism, Ubuntu, Ubuntu. These values require all of us to put our country and continent above our personal interest and where necessary to pay the supreme sacrifice for the safety, survival, and development of our country and the continent. The revolutionary values that guided our uh, the struggle of the African people should not remain the legacy of members of the National Liberation Movement. The governing party should codify all revolutionary songs and use them to preserve and propagate the revolutionary values and principles which guided the founders of our of African nations. The decision of the governing party, the ANC, to hold memorial services to honor President Kenneth Kaunda, the great humanist revolutionary, gives us an opportunity to build the Africa we want on the basis of ethical and moral values. When we lay our bishop to rest, we are not bearing the ethical and moral values he lived by. The great loss of lives resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic highlight the critical role of ethics and moral, morals in our life. This pandemic also awakens us to the reality that we are temporary sojourners on this earth and that we are here for a time being to serve God and our fellow citizens. The COVID-19 pandemic also awakens us to the reality that we should not worship material things because we are not in this world forever. Whether we like it or not, we shall all pass to the beyond. However, our eligibility to enter the spiritual worlds or kingdoms of light depends on the purity of our hearts and services to humanity. There is nothing that pleases God and our ancestors than our devotion to ethical and moral values. 
Our founders were deeply spiritual people who taught us to work for the creation of a better Africa and a better world. Respect and service to people is the highest good that brings all of us closer to God and our ancestors. So as we say, our beloved uh, uh, Bishop, let's uh, all become volunteers for the recovery of our revolutionary values and morals so that uh, we can use them as uh, building blocks for the Africa we want and uh, for a better Africa and a better world. Amen. Amen. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Comrade Matole, for the very revolutionary prayer. We will now call upon Comrade Mwako, the member of the NEC, to take us through. Thank you, Comrade Mwako. Amanda. Amanda. Can we hear me, Yes, we yes. can. Okay, thank you. Comrade Chem, um, I met Father John Osmus. It's a young refugee in Lesotho in the 80s, early 80s, that was. Here was this towering giant a gentle soul with a missing right hand. I later learned that the missing hand was a result of a bomb attack by the apartheid regime. This happened when he opened a parcel he believed to be from the NC and he was in the presence of Phyllis Naidu from the Sox and others, and they were all maimed. Father Osmos looked after young refugees, as we all know, and we are all recipients of his generosity. I happen to be one of those who used to pay occasional visits to Machiteng Mission where well, would be treated to the most delicious bread baked by the sisters, resident sisters of Masiteng, courtesy of Father Osmos. On a lighter note, but tragic one, we are told companies that following the injury, he was admitted to hospital. Their doctors informed him that they had bad news for him in that he had lost his right hand upon which he, re he responded, there's no problem because I'm left-handed. Then doctors went on to tell him that they had even far worse news in that his manhood had been taken. His response was, there's no problem, I'm celibate. This talks to the character that the John was. Always willing to give limp and blood for the cause he believed in. In our case, the cause was the liberation of the people of South Africa. In Zambia, what took his life, we are told, was a visit to a refugee camp to the uh, Rwandans in his old age, in the middle of the COVID pandemic. And that's what we are told took his life. The African National Congress dips his banners in honor of this fearless warrior and a member and chaplain of Mkwente season. We take this opportunity to thank the Osmas family for sharing him with us, with South Africa, with Africa. They did so generously. I want to also thank those amongst us, in particular General Betty Leslie, who tried their all to secure pension for Father Osmos in South Africa, but in vain. On this one, our government could have done better. For this, the NC is deeply sorry. May his soul 
his gentle soul rest in peace. Hambagasim Kondu. Thank you. Amanda. Amanda, I'm away to Comrade Mwako. Yeah. I thank you very much, Comrade Mwako. And as we said earlier on, we're going to be learning more about this uh, revolutionary giant, uh, his uh, generosity. And I know that you have already said on our behalf, Comrade Mwako, it's uh, regrettable that we were not as generous, as generous as the ANC and as a free democratic South Africa, for which he lost uh, very important parts of his body. And uh, you have actually also shared with us the humor of uh, Comrade, uh, <laughs> Comrade uh, Osmas. Yeah. And that story of uh, the parts that he had lost and how he did not have use for them is uh, loudly shared by a very close friend and comrade of his, Comrade uh, and Phil. And in sharing that story, Comrade Atfil would from time to time also expose the part that was affected in her own body, which was on the backside. So uh, how revolutionaries dealt with how they suffered through this revolution. One of those was uh, a humorous, a sense of humor, a very high sense of humor, I must say. Uh, comrade uh, comrade uh, Osmas, as we have already said, was an internationalist. And uh, many tributes have poured in from all over the continent and all over the world. Uh, we have a team at head office that will be uh, reading some of these messages. Comrade Tandim Lalose from the International Relations uh, Subcommittee will be reading uh, messages from uh, from some of these uh, internationalists. I think at the moment we will, before we have that, we will then have a, a video clip of uh, Osmos. And I hope that our technology does not fail us because it should be interesting to hear also from Father Osmos himself in his own words. Thank you. Can we have the video clip? For the first time, you know, in my life, I met a, a white man who was a supportive of the struggle. I first met him in 1976 when I was very young, naive and radical. I didn't want to see any white person around me and I saw something that was different from him. He was a human being. He wanted South Africa to be free and he loved South African people. I gave him a cold shoulder because I was a radical. I didn't want to see any white person around me. But there was something different about him. The way he talks to people, the way he explained things to us. This person could come to us any time of the day, any time of the night, if we have problems. That was unusual. So that color suddenly faded from my eyes. I could see only a human being. Now I received the parcel bomb um, in a big parcel of Suchaba, 800, there were 100 copies in that, and, and the Suchaba was coming month by month, and this month it came late. And it came in a, um, we have very well wrapped parcel. I thought they're really doing well wrapping the parcel so well. And so we peeled it down, you know, put it down on the table. And when I went to one, then it exploded. <laughs> then they threw me out of the window. Osmos was thrown into the bathroom. The ceiling fell on top of him. And my hand was on the bomb and it got blown off. Um, and, and luckily no one was killed. This came as a, as a, as a, as a kind of a dramatic event, but also for me as a wonderful um, 
gift, a privilege that I thought I was doing something important. <laughs> that to be bombed for uh, something you're doing, you know, and to be killed for something you're doing makes that thing very important. And therefore, I must do the same thing even more actively in the future. So I took this as as a um, some kind of accolade, some kind of tribute. <laughs> And that bombing kind of changed my life, I think. Um, it brought me much, much more strongly into the ANC. I knew him in Botswana. He was held in high esteem by many of us in exile, and I dare say that our leaders then had great faith in him. Uh, he is a man of great stature. And I heard from Simon Hirschfeld that the security knew that a death squad was in the country. They were looking for me and I had to leave immediately. In 1988, Bishop fled to Zambia to join other comrades who were already in that country. While the chaplain of the liberation movement in exile, Bishop Osmers was tasked with conducting the funeral of Johnston Makatini, one of the greatest leaders of the ANC. Together with Oliver Tambo, Bishop Osmers led a delegation at the time when Jesse Jackson, a renowned United States human rights activist, visited Makatini's grave. Jackson was a close friend of Johnny Makatini. Members of the National Executive Committee of the African National Congress, Reverend Jesse Jackson and distinguished visitors from the United States of North America, other visitors who are here, and ANC comrades, now gathering this morning for a short ceremony to commemorate the life and also the death of our departed friend and comrade Johnny Mfanafuti Makatini. <laughs> One thing that was very clear about him, he was very, very simple. And uh, we could not understand that this is a missionary, but he looks like uh, an African. You know, he was very out, outgoing um, compared to some of the, the, the missionaries that we had, where there was clearly a separation. Uh, between the indigenous Zambians and, and themselves. But with uh, Bishop John, by then Father John, he was very outgoing. When the eastern part of Zambia was time for it to become a bishop, he was nominated and he was unopposed. And that is a rural area. I had no vehicle, I had no house, I started with almost nothing. But I was quite happy because it was something to build on. So in all our parish centres, we, we put down boreholes for clean water. He's a man who'd come on the bus. You travel on the bus. Now, you don't get people getting on the bus. There's, there's people who were even getting embarrassed. Our bishop gets on the bus. Not get, he leaves the car and gets on the bus to come here. So, Bishop, why don't you... So, Christians had to say, Bishop, no, why don't you get on and use your car? He said, no, it's expensive. It's cheaper. The church doesn't have money. I'd rather get on the bus. It's cheaper. I only had two options, to either die or be a street kid. I had nowhere to sleep, I had nothing to eat. But when he opened that hut of his, he helped me financially, spiritually. That's just Bishop John, you see. And he has helped people from other faiths, like Muslim or whatever, or whether you are not, you don't believe in God, Bishop John will not bother you. He just gives you a help because he believes human beings are equal in the eyes of God. He came back uh, yeah, to Lusaka, and by then I'd become a bishop, and he asked, say, can I be your assistant? Now imagine, this is my father asking me to be my assistant, and that just shows you how, how simple uh, he is. When Nelson Mandela first visited, this was a wonderful um, event for the, for the movement. And it was, I was very, very um, happy because um, when he came from the plane, and I was in there in the background, and Dr. Callender saw me, and he said, come forward, please. And he brought me forward to meet Madiba personally, which was a wonderful kind of memory of my life. <laughs> People who get the Nobel Prizes, maybe he may be in the forefront, where advocating and fighting for the oppressed person 
is is uh, bishop john osmas is that kind of a person who can't get tired toward the advocacy of human rights not because he has many things to offer but what he offers with love it creates a big thing you get so i've been in africa since i was 23 i may say I'm going home to New Zealand um, in two weeks' time, but I'm coming back to Lusaka. And, and I've, this, this is my home and a place where I enjoy being, and where I'm going to die one day. And it's, it's been a, a very rich life, you know, living in the African community, and especially within the liberation struggle. What a humble lovely soul. What a humble human being. I wonder if any of us, if you lose a limb, you can actually see that as an accolade or as, an, uh, as a tribute or as, a, as wonderful or as a, as, as a gift. We've just heard Father Osmas in his own voice. And I think that uh, for many of us, it uh, really makes us a little bit uh, emotional. Uh, we have uh, messages, as I've already said, from uh, different uh, uh, comrades and different people that uh, interacted with uh, Father Osmas. And I think that we will all agree that by now, Father Osmas is uh, shaking them up there in heaven, probably has already joined the branch and he's already organizing a refugee center and is doing all the things that uh, Father Osmas was and is very good at doing. We have Comrade Tandim Lalose from the International Relations Committee, Comrade Luvuyo Shasha from the Research Unit, and Comrade Rahmat Lamera from the Policy Unit. They'll be sharing the messages. And if any of us on the platform would like to write on the messages, you can send messages. And I think that uh, our admin, would be able to highlight those and probably would have an opportunity to read them for yourselves, time allowing. Uh, Comrade Tandi, can you unmute, unmute? And then we'll have all the messages from the different, uh, by the different comrades. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Njue. Um, it is good to see you again and everyone else that I have seen on the video. Uh, my name is Tandim Glalose. I'm a, an RC member of Johannesburg Region. My responsibility in the RC it is FBO and civil society. However, I'm on the spaces of uh, Comrade Tinzualo Malulega, who is in who is hospitalized due to COVID. So I'm requested to do this this work for her. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, I'm going to be reading. Uh, I think three messages. Uh, the first message is from Emmanuel Ngabo. The second message is from Christian Miko from Rwanda. Uh, the third message, it is from Jean. It is both uh, Alfred Ngabo and Jean uh, uh, Bosco from Lusaka, Zambia. So those are the messages that I'm going to be reading. The last message is a bit longer but I will be uh, reading them as, as requested. Uh, the pain I, I, I can't explain, message by Mr. Emmanuel Ngabo from Cote d'Ivoire. I have lost a father, someone who saw me through the worst west, west of moments in my life and gave me a purpose to live. He gave me second chance to live and taught me everything I'm, 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 I am today. And now I must learn to live without him. This hurts a lot to imagine. Indeed, his love for African was in, indescribable. And now we must live knowing he lived in the land he loved. And for this reason, we have to respect his last wish as he describes it in his will. Truly, 
Over the last 10 years, we have become family despite the distance between Zambia and New Zealand. Indeed, we shall keep in touch for as long as I live. And perhaps, perhaps one day I will visit New Zealand and fulfill three promises I had, I had made to him. Keep keeping you always in my prayers, Emmanuel Ngabo, Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, the second um, uh, message comes from uh, uh, Miko. It, it says, heartless, heartfelt condolences from Christian Miko from Rwanda. I would like to convey my heartfelt condolences to the family over there in New Zealand. The news of passing of our father is very regrettable. I'm personally heartbroken. When I was young and in the, in the Meheba camp, I heard stories of uh, Father John's doing. In the, in the camp, they know him as Rwandan refugees uh, saver. Three years ago, I, I finally met him. He took me in, in and accepted to sponsor me. Our memories together were nothing short of amazing. His love for the poor, for the poor, oh, what a man we have been robbed of. He lived a very humble and simple life, yet he was great in his heart. The past three years, I have received the uh, I, re, I have received the love of a father and a leader. I can never tell the magnitude of the beautiful and amazing things he did for me in one email. I will I will take it, it will take me ages to fully exhaust everything. I'm grateful to have crossed paths with such a special human being. Most time most most times after our lovely evening meal. We will have a Bible study where he will pray for us and tell us how he would be happy to see us all graduate. Um, I, will, I will forever cherish the beautiful times we spend together with our father. I pray for God's comfort for the family over there in New Zealand. May, may the soul of my beloved father rest in peace. Attached for this email is the picture I took with him uh, when, we, when we went for special Christmas meal at the cathedral in December last year. Uh, the last uh, message, message uh, comes from Bosco, uh, uh, Alfred Ngabo and Jean Bosco from Lusaka. Uh, they are sent, their condolences uh, read as follows. It has been very sad and confusing since when we heard the bad news about the passing away of our father, Bishop John. At first, it was hard to believe it. Looking at how he had been responsible for all of us, for all our needs, preaching the, the word of God, helping the society, living for others in, in society, especially Rwandan community at large, we, we thought God could not accept such an amazing soul to go just, just like that. We have never experienced such a, trauma, a traumatizing moment. We were preparing for an exam, but the mood for exam went off. We could not believe that our dad had gone just like that. It was an, it was an oral exam and was a bit hard. We had to push ourselves, but we were, we were not sure of what we said there, but God guided us on how to do it, and we hope for the best. It is our pleasure, first of, first of all, to say that you, 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 to our late father, Bishop John, he has been trying his best to make us proud of ourselves and our community being proud of us. We never had any challenge with food, clothes, school materials, uh, or school fees. He, he could make sure that uh, we had everything we needed and could go beyond that and help our families. Up to now, we don't really understand how God has accepted that our father leaves us, but we believe and have faith that his soul, it is now heaven, and we will meet. We will meet again. I, Alfred, met Bishop John in 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 2017. 
and have lived with him for more than three years. In my life, I have never met a merciful and loving person like him. Initially, I heard about him, but it was, it was hard for me to believe that an individual can sacrifice himself like that, especially using his own resources. Bishop John lived a simple life to help the poor. Apart from helping the student, he helped the sick, he gave food to the poor, he was an active advocate for the refugees, he treated people with mercy, he did, he did a lot. Um, he will never forget how he, he cared for, we will never forget how he cared for all of us during that time. We have lived with him. We always uh, had a Bible study every, every day after supper. During the Bible study, he could pray for all of us after hearing our programs for the, day, for the next day. He will always walk from his room for, every, for everyone's room to say goodnight before he goes to bed. He knew the time he goes to bed and on, on the days when he, did, he didn't come, we knew, uh, we, knew that, um, we knew the time he goes to, to bed. And on the days when he didn't come to say goodnight, it will mean that he had slept off in his chair while listening to audio books that he enjoyed. We could go to his room and wake him up to go to bed. Every day when we came from, from the class, we could find him either in the sitting room or his bedroom to share our experiences for the day. We always enjoy talking to, uh, talking to him and bringing him a lo lot of uh, a hot water for his chocolate and Milo tea. Now he, he, he has left us. We can now describe how we were feeling when we think about him. The feeling is very painful and depressing. During this difficult time, we as students are also worried about our future. The, the bishop always told us that he wishes to see all of, all of his students graduate, and now he has left us. And uh, I, I and Jean Bos Bosco Muharakarama, still have long, uh, a long way to com complete our studies. We started a seven year course at the medicine in July, 2018, and uh, to complete in July, 2025. We don't know what is going to happen. New changes and new decisions may be made, but we pray that Bishop Jones wish to have us help till we graduate may be accomplished even if he is no longer with us. Some students are doing diploma course, others are doing a degree courses. As we continue mourning for our father, we pray that everything may go well until he is taken to, the, to rest. From Alfred Ngabo and Jean Bosco, Boscom M uh, from Lusaka, Zambia. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Tenjiwe. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Comrade Tandi. Let's go straight to Comrade uh, Luvuyo Shasha. Messages read by Comrade Luvuyo Shasha. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon. Am I on the program director? Uh, good afternoon, comrades. Good afternoon, comrade. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. I'll just be brief and precise on these messages. Uh, the one is com Comrade Zolani Mchochisa. Uh, the June 16th generation that found refuge in Lesotho were richly rewarded. Amongst the luminaries who helped them was one Bishop John Osmas fondly known as Father Osmas. He was a personal, uh, comfortable and comforting giant of a man, both physically and spiritually. Just as our leaders had their own luminaries like Bishop Ambrose Reeves, Trevor Huddleston, 
etc. We had Father Osmas. His one all-conquering trait was a visible and a simple humanity. He is more than anyone at, the, at that time demonstrated the attractiveness and naturalness of non-racialism. For us youngsters, from a lived racist reality, he was the proverbial breath of fresh air. I still remember the pregnancy of wounded Philip Naido crying for the safety of Father Osmas. A puzzle bomb had wounded Father Osmas, Sok Sokupa, and the same Aunt Phyllis, who was totally obvious of her own condition. He was a rare human, human being who, without any bombast and silly proselytizing, demonstrated the universality of his faith. He was the tower presence most welcome in the residence of the different youth formations in Lesotho. Uh, the day of the attempt on his life was a dark day for his interminational flock. His uh, proud understanding contributor to the non-racialism and benevolence of a critical generation in South Africa or fight for liberation. Amanda, this is from Comrade uh, Zolanim Tochisa in Abidjan. The second one it's from Comrade Lindamti, which is a, a humanitarian internationalist. All of us experienced and came to understand him as, as the same as this humble and simple but profound humanitarian internationalist that dedicated his entire life, extended a heart, a hand of friendship, support and, uh, and assistance to us as we arrived in Lesotho and later in Botswana and Zambia. It was in knowing that he could help us with sponges and millies that would sometimes spend our mukhele, as our UN stipend was called, knowing that he could run, we could run to him if we, if we ran out of food before the end of the month. But my profound memory of him was how he took me to go within visiting five PAC youth from King Williamstown who had been arrested at child of their involvement in the killing of a senior PLC leader in their residence in Sea Point. I happened to have known their parents. These were the sons of Nongauza, now a recently retired colonel from SANTF, Fetcher, Peter Etela. Those visits with father in the Lesotho prison for these young PAC youngsters defined my own outlook. Uh, in, in managing people, not on the basis of their political affiliation, but as part of the forces of change in our country. It, is, it equally made a difference with a sense of appreciation on their part in consolidating them as my young brother. Those visits solidified a relationship with them for years until today. It, it was with a sense of serious sadness on their part when I conveyed to them his passing away. All senior and other recently retired after their service having been integrated as part of the APLA contingency. Father Osmas, his affections and love for lending a hand for those in need reminded us of Chico Guevara and can he be said to be in the same league. We can only assume that and Phyllis Nido will welcome him with a question. Hey, Blair John, why did it take so long to join me? What rubbish is happening down there? Father Osmas will just look at her with his usual smile. We shall miss him, and his found memories of him shall forever be with us. That's from Comrade Lindamti. Uh, the last one, Comrades, is, come, is from Comrade Wandile Kalipa. I opened the petrol bomb on the 4th of July, 1979. I remember the memory of that incident is still with me since that day. Father John Osmas came to New Europa carrying out his routine visits for various issues. As he was leaving, a number of us, a number of us took a ride with him in his van. I was sitting in front with another comrade and the rest were at the back. 
when we reached the post office in Maseru, all aligned and he asked me to stay in the car and obliged as he was collecting something at the post office. The parcel contained copies of Sechaba. I opened the parcel and some of the loose copies on top were given to those comrades who were at the post office as well. The parcel was on my lap sitting in front with Father John Osmas. I so much wanted to open and grab a copy to read. Father John Osmas stopped the van and ordered me to put the parcel at the back, of which I did. He went on some errands and our last destination was Aunt Phyllis Nido's place. There were other comrades as well at the residence. After all, after all the formalities, I was asked to bring the parcel into the house. I tried opening it but could not open as the strings were tight. I remember someone giving me a knife to cut it open. I inserted the knife to cut it but it slipped twice. On the third attempt, I pressed it down with my left hand to balance the cut, uh, to balance cut, and Father John Osmas did the same with his right hand. As I went on to cut, there was a big explosion. The police were taken to hospital in Meseru. Uh, the police came and were taken, we were taken to hospital in Meseru. At hospital, I realized that Anne Philip Naido and Father John uh, Osmas were not moving or saying anything. I feared for the worst. Just after we arrived at the casualty department lying there, in a delirium, I heard a nurse saying, they are making preparations for us to be taken to Bloemfontein for treatment, and an ambulance was waiting outside, as said by a captain. I Indeed, I saw a white gentleman in a black suit. I started screaming in a protest that we cannot be taken to Bloemfontein for treatment. A comrade nurse working in the hospital had me screaming and she came to, to see what was happening and she stopped and proceeding to take us to the Plofandi. The comrade at New Europe, Europe were there at the, at, with no time. Lalango call of Father John Osmos by comrade Wandile Kalibon. Uh, thanks comrade. What <clears throat> transpired on all these three messages, it clearly talks to Shakespeare where he says William Shakespeare, each and every one of us, life is like a theater where you play your role and live. Uh, thank you so much. Amanda. Amanda, Comrade Luvuyo, and thank you very much. Uh, Comrade Rahmat, can you please uh, read the last batch of messages? Thank you. Good afternoon, comrades. I'll be reading the final tribute by Comrade Betty Leslie. I count myself amongst the honored and privileged persons to have had an opportunity to have met you in your life's journey. Father John, as I fondly called you, thank you for sharing with me, us, how to be genuine humanitarians, authentic Christians, and internationalists. Your selfless sacrifices and services to the South Africans, Basutus, Botswanas, Zambians, Rwandans, and all who happened to cross your life spot. You added value in our lives in many ways by obtaining placements in schools and tertiary institutions for all those seeking refuge in Lesotho, especially South Africans, and connecting aspirant MK fighters to ANC leadership and more. You generously shared your humble resources with all of us continuously until your last breath. It is my humble pledge to pick up and sharpen your fallen sword to continue your legacy and ensure that we forge ahead with the struggle for freedom, justice, and a better life for all. Having been born in New Zealand, your being, spirit, and soul belong to Africa. Fare thee well, son of African soil. May your revolutionary spirit and soul rest in eternal peace by Comrade Betty Leslie. My second one will be by Comrade Bridget Mabandla, kind and dependable by Bridget Mabandla. Father Osmus, was an aspiration to all who met him, all came to know about him. He was kind and dependable. Many of the young people in the struggle learned by associating with the white comrades of the caliber of Father Osmus that ours was justified struggle for a democratic, non-racial country. We are grateful for his life, 
Ambassador Bridget Mabandla. My third one is my comrade James Ngulu, a comforting giant. It is in Lesotho where Father John Osmus met many young generations who had left their country to pursue the struggle by other means. He personally interacted with the great, such as Chris Hani, Lambert Malloy, Phyllis Naidu, and others. In Lesotho, he immense himself in the work of the ANC, fully aware of the dangers this kind of work entailed. He was a foot soldier of the ANC and understood that his work with the ANC would provide him no benefit except danger or debt. This new generation of fighters were richly rewarded to be along these humble souls, such as Phyllis Naidu and Father John Osmus. He was a personable, comfortable, and comforting giant of a man, both physically and spiritually. As a New Zealander, his giant status and height was symbolic. His imposing height and body easily reminded some of us the great New Zealand forwards. If any of would remember Sean Fitzpatrick, Brett Harvey, or the latest imposing forwards, such as Kieran Reed or Brody Ratelik. These imposing forwards would easily remind one of Father Osmus, just like the beauty of the game of rugby, as it strickles, so was the kind of character of Father Osmus, who in 1976 joined the ANC with its strict rules founded on ethics, service, and commitment to the people. Till his last breath, Father John Osmus remained true to the values and respected these rules. Father Osmus understood fully well that being white, the prominent, like a sore thumb in the crowd, and that Lesotho was in the belly of the apartheid beast at the time. He knew fully well that the dangers to his own life, that he was not the only one facing danger, that his comrades equally faced danger, but he did not flinch in his association with the ANC and carrying out its task. On the 6th of July, 1979, on a Friday, Father John Osmond, together with Phyllis Naidu, Antifoli, and others, suffered a brutal bomb attack camouflaged by the assassins of Sichava, a bulletin for the Osmus Grezich so much. In the 1980s, he was removed from Lesotho and went to London. He worked at the ANC offices. He would later go to his home country, New Zealand. Because the struggle is his life, he arrived there at a turbulent moment. The Springboks were visiting New Zealand to play test rugby there. Again, the six foot tall Osmus took center stage, campaigning to halt the racist tools. He afterwards served the people of in Botswana and then Lusaka, Zambia, where he assisted refugees from Southern Africa, Sudan, Burundi, and Rwanda in his, in his capacity as Bishop of Eastern Zambia. The service of God was his mission, the struggle against apartheid, injustices, that no one must be a refugee away from his country. Was his, was his other's commitment. On all these commitments, he never flinched. He was a special one. At an advanced age of 86, on the 26th of June, in the early hours of the morning, Bishop John Osmus died. We South Africans who have claimed Bishop Osmus as ours, convey condolences to his family and celebrate his life. To his last breath, he remained a true committed member of the ANC, Comrade James Ngulu. And that's my last one, comrades. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, comrades, comrade Rahmat, and uh, all the other comrades who have read, read the messages. I think that uh, the messages speak for themselves and they confirm a, a, a life well lived. One just one point I would just like to remark on is the message that was said that Father Osmos I think uh, from Rwanda was said that uh, Father Osmos gave them a purpose to live. And they're just wondering how they're going to continue without him and the wishes and their hopes. And just to say that in this platform, I think that there are many of us who actually met Father Osmos at a time when we could have lost all the hope. And uh, many of us, and indeed South Africa, we have been able to achieve our freedom. And I don't think that uh, they should really despair. He lived a, a life well lived rather. 
And one a remark, what was in the, in the in the video that was not played, is that uh, when Father, when uh, one of the young youngsters in Masite saw Father Osmos, somebody was asking, "Who is this uh, Mlungu? Who is this Lehoa? Who is this white man?" And this youngster said, "He's not a Mlungu. He's Ndade Osmos." And that's uh, that's the African that he was, not just in terms of not uh, expression of color but his uh, Pan-Africanism and his Ubuntu, as uh, Comrade Matole had already said. In the video, the, there was a message that was read from, I think, Comrade T that was talking about Comrade Nongauza. Com uh, uh, Nongauza of the PAC, who was in the SNDF, regrettably died, I think, three days, uh, three days ago. And there's a mention of Comrade Sox. Comrade Sox is recovering from, uh, from COVID. And while we were preparing for the for this um, memorial, we were also looking for Comrade Vanguard Mkosana, who knew Comrade uh, Father Osmos very well. And uh, it is with deep sadness that we can say that uh, Comrade Vanguard passed away uh, yesterday. So Comrade, uh, we now are ready for the next stage. I just want to acknowledge on the on, on the platform, I know that many of you have not been uh, acknowledged, but I just want to acknowledge one person, Dennis Moyes, who is one of the people that hosted Father Osmos, I think either in 2017 and 2019, and they apparently had a raging party uh, with other with other comrades who are on this platform, thank you very much for joining us, and thank you very much for everything that we have done for uh, Father Osmas. I don't know, Comrade Phoebe, uh, is it possible to take a little bit of a song before we get on to the message by uh, by Comrade Osmas' sister? Is it possible? It's ready. Shanas is ready. <laughs>
Well, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for that uh, for that song. Uh, just to say that as, a, as an aside remark, of course, the song does say that Sikalela uh, and uh, uh, later on, it was actually said besides the fact that Sikalum Shabawetu but Sizauluela and that Sizaufela. I just thought that it should also be brought in and I will not ask any of these veterans on this platform to sing the song because I know that we'll be in trouble. Um, having said that, can we then have a, a message from uh, Father Osmas' sister, Elizabeth Gordon? Please, Shanas. For the past few years, John has been living with us in Christchurch in New Zealand for six months of the year. And this enabled him to get New Zealand superannuation. But it also meant that he was not allowed to be away for more than 26 weeks in the year. So he had to travel backwards and forwards between Zambia and between New Zealand in order to get his superannuation. But because he had the superannuation, it meant that he could support Rwandan students with their education. And this was very important to him. I'm really pleased to be able to send a message to your ANC memorial service for John. Because I know how important the ANC was to John. When he was a young man in Lesotho, he came to realise that it wasn't enough just to give clothes and food to the poor, what you actually need, well, what you actually needed was political change. What you needed was a new government. What you needed was the African National Congress. When John was nearly killed by a parcel bomb in 1979, I flew out from London to Lesotho so that I could be with him. And while I was there, a group of white women, I think some of them clergy wives, expatriates, they came and they called me and said, Elizabeth, we want to talk to you. We want you to talk to your brother and tell him that he, is, he has the wrong friends. He's mixing with the wrong people and it's very, very dangerous. When I told John about this, he roared with laughter. He lived by his Christian faith and he knew who his true friends were. On this day, for me it's the 1st of July, but in different circumstances, John would have been back here in New Zealand and he would have been just beginning two weeks in isolation. It's terribly cold here. Yesterday in Christchurch we had snow. And so I can just see him walking around with, with two heaters on in the room and a nice hand-knitted blanket made by his Aunt Maud many years ago wrapped around his shoulders. I'm glad that you are remembering my brother today in South Africa because on two occasions John was nearly killed by evil forces from South Africa once by the parcel bomb in 1979 in Lesotho, and once by a death squad in Botswana in 1988. But he didn't give up. I think these attacks on him seemed to strengthen him. He believed absolutely in the Freedom Charter. He believed in a free South Africa. When Oliver Tambo came to Christchurch, Quite a long time ago, I met him and I, I told him, I said, I'm John Osmer's sister. I'm very proud of it. And he looked most surprised and he said to me, oh, I never thought of John as a New Zealander. He always seemed to belong to Africa. John loved New Zealand and he loved his New Zealand family. We have no doubt about that at all. 
but he also had a family in Africa. And we knew that his heart was always in Africa. So, in our great sadness at this time, and it is a great sadness, it's a very small consolation to me that John died where he really wanted to be. Well, a beautiful message indeed from uh, Elizabeth. And once again, we should thank uh, Father Osmos' uh, family for lending him to uh, our revolution and uh, for having accepted the price that uh, Father John Osmos had to pay for his uh, internationalism. And I think that one of the lessons, and there are many lessons we're drawing, but one of the lessons is a question that we can raise. How many of us share the little that we have uh, with those that are in need as Father Osmo said. It's just that we don't have a lot of time to share the stories of sometimes how we would uh, cheat him even out of his uh, uh, little income, but for him to share his pension. At this point, we're going to be moving very quickly to the eulogy by uh, uh, Father Lapsley, who himself uh, is evidence of uh, the apartheid and what it does to what it did to many comrades and internationalists. Uh, Father Lapsley, please can you unmute and we are ready for your eulogy. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Comrade Tenji. Uh, um... Uh, program director and uh, beloved ambassador to, to, to Spain. Uh, good afternoon, dear comrades and friends. Uh, thank you to the ANC for hosting this memorial service for Bishop John Osmus. I am deeply honored to be asked to offer this eulogy. What I have to say will be in three parts, a reflection on John's life, a letter I wrote to John after his passing and ending with a prayer. Since the news first broke of John's passing on June 16th, many of us have been going down memory lane, recalling the innumerable ways Father John touched our lives. More than anything he ever said, as valuable as that was, John's actions were much louder than his words. It was Isitwalandwe Trevor Huddleston's writing that first confronted John Osmus with the evil of apartheid in far away Aotearoa, New Zealand. In 1958, when I was nine years old, and many of us were not yet born, John came by boat to South Africa and spent six weeks traveling across South Africa on a motorbike. From that time, South Africa and her people were in his blood. John studied Susutu in London and trained for the priesthood with Father Huddleston's religious congregation. Then on advice from Father Huddleston, he came to Lesotho to work as a priest. Like many of us, he became a Southern African. John was involved with the progressive university Christian movement, which helped shape and form a generation of young Christian social justice activists in South Africa and Lesotho. As far back as 1970, Father John was banned from entering South Africa. Many of us here can bear witness to the key role Father John played in their lives, following the Soweto uprising, which we heard from Nguaco and from Wandile and from others. It was against this backdrop that we witnessed John's faith displayed in his practical solidarity with the refugee community. John realized that the time had come to throw his lot in with the liberation movement. So he applied to join the ANC which nearly cost him his life, unlike more recent times when some have joined to feed their greed. 1979 was another defining moment, 
A parcel filled with copies of Sachaba was intercepted and turned into a bomb, injuring Father John, Soxa Cooper, Wandili Kalipa, who we heard from, our late beloved comrade Phyllis Naidu, Vuyasili Madaka, and Sipiwe Sitoli. And we heard from Nguako the, the story about the conversation with the doctor, um, which says something quite extraordinary about um, the kind of person uh, that John was. It's worth noting that those present were five Black people, including Phyllis's, Phyllis Naidu, a Black South African of Indian descent and a white internationalist. I say this in the context of the increasing number of unchallenged racist attacks on Indian South Africans that seek to destroy our nation. When I was chaplain of the National University of Lesotho, I had a large poster on my glass front door of San Nuyorma after the Kasinga massacre, holding two babies in his arms with a caption, babies of a colonial war. A wealthy, although compassionate, white Lesotho resident went to my bishop to complain about the poster. The bishop called a meeting of his senior priests, which included Father John, to decide what to do with his political priest. Father John said he didn't see any problem with the poster. And by the way, he said, I gave it to him. I tell the story to illustrate John's view that charity was not enough. It was necessary to advocate for and work for liberation whilst feeding the hungry and clothing the naked. In time, the apartheid regime leaned on Lesotho to make Bishop John a persona non grata. In the run up to the 1981 Springbok tour of New Zealand, Father John played a key role and mobilizing people across New Zealand to oppose the tour, waving the stump of his missing hand to emphasize his points. In 2012, Father John was presented with an African National Congress Centennial Award for his outstanding contribution to the international campaign against apartheid. When John became a parish priest in Molapololi in Botswana, he was able to provide a discreet safe house for MK soldiers being infiltrated back into South Africa. Once more, Father John became a target of the apartheid death squads. He was tipped off by the Botswana security and had to leave Botswana at a moment's notice. Strikingly, the attempts by the apartheid regime only served to deepen his faith and commitment and never to intimidate, which of course we just heard in that message just now from uh, John's sister Elizabeth. For a number of years, Father John served as chaplain to the ANC in Lusaka, whilst being a very active in the Anglican church in Zambia. When it was time to come home to South Africa, Father John chose to stay in Zambia. He was elected unopposed as the first bishop of a new diocese in northeastern Zambia, where his ashes will be buried. Back in 2007, the New Zealand government appointed him as a companion of the New Zealand Order of Merit for his services to the Anglican Church. Along with Desmond Tutu and President Kaunda, in 2016, Archbishop Thabo Makhoba conferred on Bishop Osmers his Peace with Justice Award. Several years ago, Bishop Osmers went blind, but it did not deter him. Until his last breath, he remained committed to the rights and welfare of refugees in Zambia from a number of African countries, especially Rwandese. Just a week before his death, Bishop John, still recovering from pneumonia, was driven for eight hours back to his old diocese. The occasion was the opening of a new center named after him. However, his motivation for going there 
was to meet the prime minister to hand over a letter and advocate for the plight of Rwandese refugees in Zambia, who for reasons of real politic are denied refugee status. And then Bishop John got COVID and died a few days later on June 16th. Bishop John tried to get a South African pension, but failed not to spend on himself, but to help with the support of refugees. At his, memorials, at his memorial in Christchurch, New Zealand, John's sister Elizabeth Gordon launched a memorial fund to complete the education of the Rwandese refugees with whom John was staying. I pray that some of us in honor of John will contribute to that fund. The details are on the Christchurch Transitional Cathedral website. I humbly ask that the ANC makes those details available on its website, perhaps with the recording of this service. My prayer also is that the ANC would propose to the government, our government of South Africa, that we give Bishop John a posthumous national award. Father John was a man of deep faith. We all have much to learn from him. He was a freedom fighter. He was also a saint. While he related with people of all faiths and those with no religious faith, for many over the last 60 years he spent on our mother continent, he was the face of Christ. Bishop John was a victim of COVID. Not that he, not, now that he is in heaven, I'm sure he is praying that we all get vaccinated. Bishop John has left us during one of the most momentous weeks in our history, as the country waits and watches to see if our last democratically elected president will accept, as he told us he would, his bitter pill of going to prison yet again. As Nelson Mandela said at the inauguration of the Constitutional Court, Today I rise, not as an accused, but on behalf of the people of South Africa, to inaugurate a court South Africa has never had, a court on which hinges the future of our democracy, unquote. I'm sure Bishop John is sad that former President Jacob Zuma is going to prison as a consequence of his own actions. I'm equally sure he's delighted that the rule, is law, the rule of law is triumphing and that the wheels of justice are beginning to hold the corrupt to account. Bishop John Osmus did not give 60 years of his life to bless looting on an industrial scale. I have no doubt it pained him to see some of his erstwhile comrades betraying the country because of greed. What would pain John particularly is to hear that there are political parties and some politicians fanning the fires of xenophobia. Now that John is in heaven, when he is not chatting with Comrade O.R. and El Patina and Helen Joseph and Chris Honey and Phyllis Naidu and, 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 I am certain he has God's ear. I'm sure that he is telling God that the new saints of our time are whistleblowers, some investigative journalists, members of the SIU, judges like Sisi Kampepi, and politicians of different political parties who still have a conscience to fight alongside the poor and the oppressed as John did throughout his 86 years. As Bertolt Brecht told us, there are those who struggle for a day and they are good. There are those who struggle for a year and they are better. There are those who struggle for many years and they are better still. But there are those who struggle all their lives. These are the indispensable ones. Bishop John was such an indispensable one. As for us, Judith February reminded us in a quote from Coretta Scott King, and I quote, 
Freedom is never really won. You earn it and win it in every generation. And now may I share the letter I wrote to Bishop John after he passed away. Dear John, it's just a few days since you left us to join the ancestors. To me, you were always an older brother. As we often say in our part of the world, a brother from another mother. When we first met, you were already the priest at Masiti Parish in Lesotho and beginning to receive the Soweto generation of young people fleeing apartheid violence. When I was expelled from South Africa as part of the class of 76, you were there to meet me. We were kindred spirits, both of us New Zealand born, both Anglican priests, both members of the ANC, with lifelong commitment to South Africa's liberation struggle and to the welfare and rights of refugees everywhere. Both of us survivors of attempted assassination. I only discovered since your passing that like me, your conviction that apartheid was evil and should be ended came from reading Trevor Huddleston's Not For Your Comfort. Our voices were important also for the anti-apartheid struggle in New Zealand as two Kiwis immersed in black communities in Southern Africa. All of us were in awe of how you responded when you were grievously injured by the parcel bomb attack in 1979. Your indomitable spirit and even humor in the face of that act of state terror inspired and gave courage to many. Throughout your ministry, you have embodied the relationship between faith, compassion, kindness, and transformative justice. Across Southern Africa, you were a comforter, a confidant, and an advocate for countless freedom fighters and refugees. When you had to leave Botswana under further threat of assassination, I was honored to receive you in Zimbabwe. You never wavered in your belief in the justice of our cause as, some, as something noble and godly. Your ministry from Lesotho to Botswana to Zambia touched the lives of thousands inside and outside the church. Indeed, all those who love peace and justice were your companions. Even as we considered you to be part of our families, we have rejoiced. Your birth family, Elizabeth and Derry, John, Susanna, Margaret and Charlotte and their children were by your side in every way over the decades. Even blindness did not deter you from your advocacy and support for Rwandese refugees in Zambia. Only John Osmus could commute between Christchurch in New Zealand and Lusaka in Zambia, not for selfish reasons, but to get the resources to support and educate your extended Rwandese family. My dear John, your life is both an inspiration and a challenge to each of us to continue as you did until God says your time is up. We consider you to be a hero. We wish more bishops and leaders of faith communities were like you. Across the world, we will tell Father John Osmond's stories, even as we carry you in our hearts. Rest well, good and faithful servant. Your work is over, your battle won. So let us pray. Today, we give thanks for the life of Bishop John Osmond a freedom fighter, a bishop of the Church of God, a saint for our time. Rest eternal grant unto him. May light perpetual shine on him. We pray for the well-being of every person whose life was touched by John throughout his 86 years. We pray for the people of Lesotho, Botswana, Zambia, touched by his ministry. We pray for John's extended family of refugees in Zambia as they grieve for him. 
We give thanks for John's family and friends and Aotearoa in New Zealand, for Elizabeth and Derry and their children and grandchildren, especially John's niece, Charlotte, undergoing major surgery on Tuesday. We pray for the whole human family affected by COVID-19 and for Mother Earth as she weeps. Loving God, we bring before you our refugees, every, <coughs> refugees everywhere and ask that wherever they are, they will find a John Osmus to comfort them and walk beside them on the road to dignity and a decent life. As South Africans, help us also to recover a moral compass in our private and public lives. We pray for our wounded nation, for the healing of our psychological, emotional, and spiritual wounds. Loving God, we ask your blessing on all whistleblowers everywhere. We ask you to help us to defeat the corrupt and pray that the corrupt will turn from their wicked ways. Thank you, God, for the judges of our constitutional court. Keep them safe and give them your wisdom. We pray for Jacob Zuma and those who support him and ask that before he comes to you, that he will come clean and accept responsibility for the wrong he has done to our nation. Help us as a nation to navigate this time with respect for one another. We ask your blessing on the ANC and we pray that it will rediscover its moral compass and self-correct to serve the whole nation with integrity. Guide us all to help build the nation of our dreams with equality and dignity for all. We pray for the meeting of the NEC this weekend. We pray for our president that you will guide him and give him and all our leaders wisdom and courage. As Trevor Huddleston taught us to pray, we say, God bless Africa, guard her children, guide her leaders, give her peace. We offer these prayers and all the holy names of God. Amen. And Kosi Sikileli, Africa. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Father Epsley. Thank you for the eulogy. I don't think that I can add anything. And thank you for the, for the prayer. What I forgot to say is that uh, Father Lapsley, a human rights activist himself, is a founder of the International Work for Peace. And I should have said that right at the beginning. Uh, I know that we have run uh, over our time by uh, almost 10 minutes and uh, apologies to all the participants. But it is now time for me to thank all the speakers and all the participants for being part of this great tribute to Father Osmos. Even if no songs are composed about or for him or poems are written about him, or even if we don't have statues, statues uh, erected for Father Osmos or streets named uh, after him, I think the proposal that comes from that eulogy, we should actually persuade, urge the African National Congress to take it forward to government. I think that's the least we can do as the ANC and also as a, as a nation. But in the meantime, I, I hope that uh, Comrade Phoebe and uh, the comrades at Lutuli will be able to collate all these tributes because I think that they can add a lot of value to our political education and to our umkhabu. Um, but uh, having said that, I would like to having thanked all the speakers and particularly thanked the, the international messages and all the messages. And I take the point that has been made that we are still under a global uh, pandemic. And of course, it's not just a pandemic, it also has got uh, these other legs of gender-based violence and the empathy increase in inequality amongst the nation and within the nations. So we've got to still continue to be careful and do all the, all the protocols. 
I just personally want to end with a quote and um, believe it or not, this quote I first heard from Father Osmas in Masite in 1978, when he tried to show me the common values between real Christians and real communists. And this says, I quote, we must be capable of feeling deeply any injustice committed by anyone anywhere in the world. And that was by Che Guevara, but I first heard it from Father Osmos. I wish all of you the best and uh, Father Osmos till we meet again. Thank you very much for participating in this uh, platform. And once again, uh, apologies for having taken more than we had been allocated. Thank you very much for, to the administrators for assisting us with all the technology. weekend, uh, but remember we are under COVID level is better that you just put yourself under level, under level 10. Thank you, bye. I think we'll have a song from uh, from uh, Lutuli House.